my stalker down the street it is a two story from reddit mostly i couldn't sleep the tension was too much every time i peeked over my bedroom window i saw him standing there he was about a hundred feet away across the street under a tree by the lamp post frozen like a statue i first spotted him around one name he stood there for hours i couldn't make out of his eyes from the distance but i know he was looking straight at me i know this because my room is on the second floor of the house and he said was pointing upwards everything about the man was odd i never seen anyone like him there was a mailbox a few feet from him and it was half of his size but the tree shielded almost everything else and that's all i could see i waited and waited for him to step forward so that the dusty old lamp post would illuminate him in its yellow glow i couldn't sleep knowing there was a black figure of a man stalking me from under a oak tree across the street i got closer to the window and waved at him i tilted my head and put my hands on my hip i leaned forward and squinted engaging him in a stare down i think i didn't see anyone else out on the street not even those pesky raccoons that night was eerily quiet and hopelessly dark even the moon was hiding I dragged a cushion chair to the window and continued to watch. I put one foot on the frame and sat back. I let out a strong yawn. My eyes began to drop and my god fell. I woke up in the chair and I learned that I had been asleep just for a minutes. I almost forgot why i was sitting in the chair until i looked out the window in front of me he was still there at the point i thought of calling the cops but i didn't what if he's homeless am i going to call cops on some poor man i can't even prove he's doing anything to me in particular so i sat back in chair and watched but something finally caught up my eye in the corner of the window a dog made its way on the sidewalk towards the man it was a big german shepherd wagging its tail and sniffing each and every trash it passed by i leaned forward and i watched it get closer and closer to the man in the tree The dog stopped and tucked its tail between its legs. Watching the man in confusion, it got close enough until it was right at his feet. That's when everything became less visible. My nose was up again as the window. I was so close to it. My eyes widened like that of a child at the sight of candy. And that's when I heard it. The dog let out a short yell. I opened the window and put my head out as much as I could get a better view. But I certainly wasn't heading downstairs to go outside and confront the man. I did go down the downstairs to phone the police. As I waited for them, I kept my eye on the man. He was in the same place, same posture, and same eerie atmosphere. I was sure the dog was dead. I heard its unmistakable cry, followed by complete silence. It was dead, and that psycho across the street was the one who murdered it. But then I heard a bark. It came. from exactly the same spot where the man was. I 
couldn't believe my eyes as I stepped closer to the window for the first time since I saw him. The man moved. It looked like he was kneeling. He wasn't as stirring as he was before. So I'm very sure he was kneeling or something. And every time I heard that bark, his head would move. The man, he was barking. It sounded exactly like that of your dog. Police arrived. I had told the operator that there was a man standing across the street from my house and that he killed a stray dog when he walked up to him. The cop parked his cruiser pretty far and began walking towards the man. I felt like opening the window and screaming, Yes sir, he's right there. But be careful, I think he's dangerous. I didn't. The officer stood there and spoke with the man for about 10 minutes. Well, the officer spoke at him. It didn't look like the man responded to the questions at all. And the officer grew irritated. I think I learned a lot about body language from this holiday. I looked away for half of a second and a loud bang rumbled the window. There was a gunshot. I ducked under the frame and crawled under the bed. It was silent for a while. I crawled back to the window and looked over. The officer was dead. A puddle of blood began to slip into the sidewalk drive. My heart wanted to leave my chest. I almost wanted an anxiety. I attempted to pick up the phone three different times but each time my hand would grow weak and drop it. I couldn't contain myself. As you could imagine, I wasn't prepared bodily or mentally for what came next. The man stepped forward. The old lamp post dressed him in night yellow and I could finally see him. The thing is he looked exactly like the officer. The one laying on the sidewalk dead. He mimicked the dead officer's movements too. Everything from the way he walked to his mannerisms when he spoke. It looked like he was even impersonating the way the officer was questioning him before 10 minutes before. And he was naked. By the time the cops arrived, the man was gone. I explained everything to them. Over and over again, they questioned me for the next few days. I checked the window each time before bed since that night. I even checked when I got up in the middle of the night for water or to use the bathroom. But most of the times I got up to check where when I wake up from violent nightmares. After some time, comfort came. I believe for a moment that the man was gone for good. I had another nightmare, but there was something different about this one. Different in the sense that it felt real, very, very real. In this dream or nightmare, I was sleeping in the bed. I wake up, startled to a sensation on the back of my head, cold one, like someone put their frozen hands on me. And as I turned around, half asleep, my eyes hardly catch someone leaving. I just see their foot for a split second as they get out of sight and that was the end of the dream. Well, maybe it wasn't a dream. Maybe someone really did walk into my room and touch the back of my head. Because one night I received the following phone call from a dear friend of mine. Bryce? I answered. Hey, he replied. What's, what's up? Everything is okay? Why are you calling so late? You think you're funny man. I pushed for a second. What? I got up in the bed. Well, he began. I was getting ready to go to bed. Then I look out my window and guess 
who I see standing outside my house at 1 a.m. I post again, confused. Who? Oh, Mason, you're really not funny. Who goes this far for a prank? Have you ever faced creepy things in your life? What would you do if you are in Mason's situation? Leave your answers in the comment section below. I would love to listen. For more creepy stories like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. If you like my video, just give thumbs up.